Puffy, right? His baby mom, Kim Porter, right? She got a whole lot of Tupac related posts on her IG. She's right next to Puffy and she's wearing the Tupac shirt. Did Tupac and Kim Porter know each other? And maybe Kim liked him. Pac more than he liked Puff, but she couldn't have Pac. A shocked and devastated Diddy spotted at the home where his ex suddenly and mysteriously died. Her good friend, Kimora Lee Simmons, appearing inconsolable at the house, 47-year-old Porter's body found after a desperate call to 911. So you know how Diddy is being dragged for allegedly putting out a hit on Tupac? Well, it looks like the internet now also wants Puffy to answer for the death of his ex-girlfriend and mother of his children, Kim Porter. And this is because new evidence recently emerged seemingly confirming that Kim knew something about Diddy's alleged involvement in the deaths of both Tupac and Biggie Smalls. So Kim died suddenly in 2018 at the age of 47, and according to the official report, her death was the result of complications from pneumonia. But several industry insiders have suggested that Diddy had Kim poisoned because she was allegedly planning to expose him in a tell-all book. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died it, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. Kim's ex-husband, Albi Shore, also previously referred to Kim's death as murder and claimed that Kim was running from someone before she passed. But that's not all. See, everyone knows that Kim dated Albi Shore before Diddy. But what a lot of people forget is that she also dated Def Jam executive Shakir Stewart, who was later found dead, supposedly from a self-inflicted fat wound. Honestly, it's mind-boggling how many people have past that have been connected to Diddy. But is there any evidence that Kim knew the real truth about Tupac and Biggie's murders? Did Diddy actually engage in foul play to silence Kim? Let's get into it. Kim and Kim still continue dating and it is said that allegedly Kim told him a lot of personal information about Diddy. Nobody knows what that information was, but allegedly it was about Diddy's involvement in certain things and uh, additional intimate information about Diddy. So in case you missed it, Diddy's got a new album out, and one of the songs is titled Kim Porter, in honor of his late longtime partner. In a recent interview, Diddy claimed Kim still inspires him, and he said he wanted to dedicate this song to her so that she could visit him in his dreams. And we started writing a song, and I was like, I feel like... I really want to make sure she gets the message and I called John Legend. I was like, John, I need you to sing to the heavens above. And that's how we he got did. Kim Porter. Yeah. And she has come and visited me in my dreams. But the song did not sit right with a lot of people because many of them are still convinced that Diddy had something to do with Kim's very strange passing. So to give you some context, Kim was a model and actress who had first met Diddy when she was working at Uptown Records and she got a job there as the late Andre Harrell's assistant. And even though Kim was dating Albie Shore at the time, Diddy became obsessed with her and started pestering her. Kim and Albie welcomed their son Quincy in 1991, but they broke up shortly after and sometime in 1993, Kim started dating Diddy. They dated off and on for 13 years and had three kids together, son Christian and twin daughters Delilah Starr and Jesse James. But Diddy never proposed to Kim and she finally ended things with him for good in 2007 after she discovered that he had fathered a child with his associate, Sarah Chapman. But that wasn't even the worst part because according to Diddy's bodyguard, Gene Deal, Diddy also used to lay hands on Kim. In a recent interview with The Art of Dialogue, Gene said that Kim tried to find back the best way she knew how. And he recalled one incident when Kim had to use a corkscrew to get Diddy off of her. One night uh, when they were at, at home, at Kim's house on 110th Street, he wanted to, you know, put his hands on her in the wrong way. And Kim took one of those corkscrews and ripped his wrist up and hit an artery. And when she did that, he had to rush over to St. Luke's Hospital. I met him over there to the hospital. It was me, him, and Kim in the hospital when he was bleeding like crazy. When she wasn't taking that, she wasn't gonna take that ass whooping and she got him off of him the best way she could. According to Gene, Diddy was also extremely controlling and had his goons follow Kim around to stop her from talking to other men. Meanwhile, he was out there cheating on her the whole time. Over the span of 13 years, Kim broke up and made up with Diddy several times. And during one of their breakups, she started dating Shakir Stewart, a record executive at Def Jam. Diddy allegedly hit the roof when he found out about Kim and Shakir's relationship, and he ended up confronting Kim about this. They got into a heated 
fight and Kim suffered a broken nose, allegedly. Most of the reports about this incident have been buried, but I managed to find one article published in 2005 that referenced the altercation, saying that Kim was left with a broken nose after the couple argued on Combs's yacht in San Tropez. The article states that Combs flew in a specialist plastic surgeon from Geneva after the accident and that Porter has since claimed that she hurt her face after she banged her nose on a table. But it gets even more disturbing from there because Kim reportedly continued to see Shakir despite Diddy confronting her. So Diddy allegedly started threatening Shakir. And then on November 1st, 2008, Shakir was found in his Atlanta home from a wound. His death was ruled a suicide, but shortly after, rumors started flying around that Kim told Shakir something about Diddy's alleged involvement in Tupac and Biggie's deaths, leading to speculation that Shakir's death wasn't self-inflicted after all. One source later told Media Takeout that Diddy had previously almost Shakir once after he found out about his relationship with Kim. Kim was saying Shakir and Diddy found out and he went apeshit. He tracked Shakir down to his hotel. Then Diddy went up there without security and beat him to a bloody pulp. Now as for the alleged information that Kim had about Pac and Biggie's murders, it's not clear exactly what she knew. However, considering she spent over 13 years with Diddy, she must have seen and heard a lot. Jean Deal also previously confirmed that Kim had a thing for Pac and that Diddy hated when she would bring him up. Up. Maybe Kim liked him, Pac more than he liked Puff, but she couldn't have Pac. And Pac didn't have the money that Puff had. There's also been a lot of speculation that Kim was trying to tell us something about Pac's death because she had a lot of Pac-related posts on her Instagram prior to her death. Also, back in 2015, Kim attended the LA Film Festival with Diddy and their kids, and she wore a Tupac shirt. I don't know, y'all, but the fact that Kim chose to wear this and pose next to Diddy on the red carpet, I think she knew what she was doing. But sadly, Kim's life came to a sudden end on November 15th, 2018, and the coroner's report later attributed her death to complications from pneumonia, stating that the manner of death was natural. While it is true that Kim was sick in the weeks leading up to her death, coroner's report stated that Kim was taking antibiotics and by November 14th, she no longer had a fever and was feeling fine. It didn't take long before fans started saying there was something suspicious about Kim's death and then Al B. Shore publicly called her death a murder. In July 2020, Al shared a since deleted photo of himself crying and wrote, I just found this footage from the morning I learned of Kim Porter's murder and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. He then added, I do know very clearly that Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. Albie also added the hashtag, don't let the love songs fool you, seemingly insinuating that Diddy had something to do with it. And then in November 2021, Albie posted a throwback photo of him, Kim, Quincy, and Quincy's then girlfriend, Ryan Destiny, claiming in the caption that Kim told him she was running and he said, call the FBI. He also added a comment, you would never believe what she went through. But get this, just months after he posted this, Al B suddenly developed multiple organ failure and spent two months in a coma. Luckily, he made it, but he later said that doctors didn't believe he'd make it through with everything going on simultaneously. And while Al B never explained what caused his sudden medical emergency, Jaguar Wright later speculated that Diddy had him poisoned, just like he allegedly did to Kim. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Jaguar also pointed out that all of Diddy's former associates who died or fell ill were planning to release books and documentaries, including Kim. They were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. 
So now that Keefe D has been arrested for Pac's murder and Diddy's name is trending, fans are calling for Kim's case to be reopened. One fan tweeted, Diddy was present when Tupac was shot the first time. Diddy was associated with the now charged murderer of Tupac. So Kim Porter dies from a mysterious illness and months later her son's father nearly dies from a mysterious illness. Diddy was present when Biggie was murdered. FBI. And another fan added, the Diddy Kim Porter rabbit hole on TikTok makes me firmly believe this man will serve jail time and his time is coming sooner than later. But how do y'all feel about this theory that Diddy eliminated Kim? Do you think Kim knew something about Pac and Biggie's deaths? Let me know in the comments and then check out this next video.